Hey, today we're going to talk about osmosis, which is our continuation of talking about fluid transport in cells. Uh, so osmosis is really just a special case of diffusion. You learned last day that diffusion is movement from high concentration to low concentration. So, you know, as an example, you, you make some microwave popcorn and you have all that wonderful buttery scent from the popcorn and ends up traveling throughout the house, right? And that's happening because the popcorn particles are moving from high concentration to low concentration. That's diffusion. Osmosis is really just diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane. So semi-permeable, meaning it lets some things through water, but it stops other things from going through. So maybe that's something like ions or sugars uh, that can't get through instead. So a little bit of information about this. Uh, the most common substance found inside and around the cell is water. About 70% of a cell's contents is in fact water. So you can see why it's important that we have a special kind of name for water because it's so critical to the function and makeup of the cell. Water particles are small and can easily move in and out of cells. They can just go through the membrane. In fact, cell membranes have special channels for water to go through. Diffusion of water through a selectively permeable, and I use the term semi-permeable, these both mean the same thing, uh, membrane is called osmosis. During osmosis, water will move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So water goes from where there is more water to where there is less water. In other words, water moves from a dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. Now it's important when we look at that to realize I'm talking about the solute, right? The thing that's dissolved in the water. So when I talk about a dilute solution, what I'm actually saying is that for a dilute solution, there is more water because dilute means I have less solute. So therefore I must have more of the water solvent. So from a more water solution, to a less water or more concentrated solution. This is talking about less water. So let's say we have this system set up, right? Where I have a more concentrated solution to the right and I have a more dilute solution to the left. So as you can tell, I have more solute, that's the pinky purplish dots here to represent solute. I have more solute on this side than I do on this side. And then the rest of this represents the water, kind of the general pink. So if I take a look, I'm going to end up having water traveling from where there's more water, the left-hand side, right? There's more pink there, to where there's less water, which is the right-hand side. So water is going to move in this direction for the net movement. In other words, more water is going to move to the right than moves to the left. And as a result, what happens is that I end up with um, more solution on the right-hand side as more and more water moves over and less solution on the left-hand side. So osmosis will actually cause a bunch of the water to move from left to right. And of course, this red line represents my semi-permeable membrane. Okay, so osmosis is water moving from where there's more water, a higher concentration of water, to where there's less water, a lower concentration of water. Okay, and so when I talk about solute, it's moving from where it's um, more dilute, less concentrated for solute, to where it is going to high concentration of solute or more concentrated. So just remember that water and solutes are going to be opposites here. 
So let's talk about an application for this. One way to, and maybe you've heard this before, to kill slugs is to just put some salt on them. So why do you think this works? Why does that kill the slugs, the poor slugs? And I mean, what's happening here is when we put salt on the slugs, we're making the outside of the slug have this really high concentration, of course, of salt. And then water will come out of the slug, right, to where there's less water outside the slug. So the salt essentially helps draw the water out because outside of the slug, you have this really concentrated salt solution. And inside, you have the normal slug innards, which are less concentrated for salt. So water will travel out by osmosis from the inside of the slug to the outside of the slug, and the slugs will shrivel up. So uh, I want to show you this neat little simulation here. I'm going to reset this. This shows pure water on the left and then water and sodium ions on the right. So this would be kind of like once the salt is added to the outside of the slug, right? So what happens is water is more concentrated on the left and it's less concentrated on the right to begin with. I'll just restart this here. So over time, more and more water travels to the right, trying to make the concentration of water equal on both sides. Now you'll notice water's going in both directions. I have some water that's moving from the right to the left, but the net movement is from left to right. More water moves to the water and sodium ion side, right, then it moves to the pure water side. So this is an example of osmosis. It's water moving through a selectively permeable membrane from where there's more water, higher concentration, to where there's less water, lower concentration. And that's going to continue until the concentration of water on both sides is relatively equal. So if I were to draw a square, right, and I looked at both sides, that square, the same size of square, should have the same amount of water molecules in it, left and right. And at that point, that's where the concentration of water is equal on both sides. Okay, so that's, that's osmosis. So now what we're gonna talk about is how does this apply to plants? Because this is so important for plants in terms of uh, getting the water they need from the soil and doing photosynthesis. So plants need a large supply of water to make sugars through the process of photosynthesis. And you learned about photosynthesis last year in Science 7, hopefully. Um, but photosynthesis is when you take water and carbon dioxide, and with a little bit of sunlight for energy, it ends up making sugar and oxygen. Now the water comes from the soil, right? Then it comes from the roots up the xylem and then goes to the leaves. Carbon dioxide is just actually absorbed uh, from the air. And then inside of the leaves of the plant, sugars are made and oxygen is also made, which ends up diffusing out of the leaf over time. So we can talk about diffusion in this discussion as well. But uh, learning about how the fluids actually get around the plant is a great application of understanding osmosis. So most photosynthesis occurs in the leaves. Water gets to the leaves using the following process. So first of all, water enters the roots of the plant through osmosis. In the roots of the plant, there are sugars and minerals that are in there. And so there's actually less water inside of the roots than there would be in the soil. So water travels through the semi-permeable or selectively permeable membrane of the roots from where it's higher in concentration for the water in the soil to where it's lower in concentration inside of the root. So it travels through or into the roots by osmosis. As more and more water flows into the roots, it causes pressure to build up. We actually call this osmotic or turgor pressure. Okay, so it's pressure due to osmosis. As more and more water comes into the roots, that pressure gets higher and higher. Now also on top of that, water ends up traveling up to the leaves and then evaporating through openings that we call stomata. 
And this process of evaporation happening from leaves, we call this transpiration. So water is also leaving the leaf by transpiration. And that's like sucking up a straw, okay? Sucking on a straw. It brings up water because as water leaves by transpiration, more water gets pulled up to take its place. So we have two forces at play that are trying to get the water up from the roots all the way up to the leaves. We have the pressure from osmosis uh, in the roots as more and more water comes in, pushing up. And then we also have the pulling from transpiration as water evaporates from the leaves. And that's pulling from the top. So I have pushing from the bottom, from root pressure, from osmosis, and then I have pulling from the top uh, from transpiration. So root pressure pushes and transpiration pulls water up the xylem. And the xylem is the vessels that water go through in a plant. Okay, we call that the xylem. Well, for sugar, it's the phloem. So here's a nice little diagram that kind of shows a bit of this and will help us uh, show the process. So water comes in through the roots by the process of osmosis. So the roots, the, the cells in the roots have a semi-permeable or selectively permeable membrane. They allow some things to get through, like water, but they stop other things, like for example, sugars, uh, minerals, okay, that we want to keep inside of the roots. So water will travel from the soil to the inside of the roots, and it does that because there's less water in the roots than there is in the soil as long as, of course, there's enough water around and the plant's not dying from lack of water. Then as more and more water goes into the roots, this ends up swelling up and pressure builds up. We call this osmotic pressure or root pressure is another term for this. That root pressure pushes the water up. Then we also have water exiting the leaves through the stomata Okay, through the process of transpiration, which is basically just water evaporating from the leaves. This is the pulling force that's pulling the water up the plant. Also coming out of that stomata, I have oxygen, which gets made in the leaf in photosynthesis, and that diffuses out through the stomata from where there's more oxygen inside the leaf because it's being made there to where there's less, the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide does the same thing. CO2 diffuses from where there's more of it, the atmosphere, to where there's less of it inside the leaf. So because carbon dioxide is constantly being used up in the leaf because it's used for photosynthesis, it's always gonna have a lower concentration in the leaf than outside the leaf. So carbon dioxide is always diffusing in and then it gets used up again by that photosynthesis process. So again, remember that I have water and carbon dioxide both of these things are coming into the cells of the leaf and specifically being used by the chloroplasts, that organelle. And then as a result, it makes, makes sugar and oxygen. Sugar ends up getting distributed throughout the plant, okay, through the phloem, and then oxygen ends up diffusing out of the leaf. Show you a little bit more here or we'll talk a little bit more about this. Most photosynthesis takes place in a layer of the leaf that is filled with chloroplasts. We actually call this uh, normally the palisade tissue cells or layer. Uh, and they're these long, long um, cells at the very top of the leaf, almost the very top. I shouldn't say the very top because there is a couple of layers before that that are clear to let sunlight through. But those palisade tissue cells are just packed with chloroplasts. And that's where the sugar gets made. That's where photosynthesis occurs. It's in the chloroplasts of these cells. On the underside of the leaf, we have the stomata. Uh, stomata is plural. Stoma is singular. I'll just kind of write that down here. Stoma is the singular term, while stomata is plural. So stomata allows carbon dioxide to come into the leaf, and then the oxygen and the water leaves the leaf. So here's actually a cross-section diagram of a leaf. Uh, so this right here represents a cell and specifically a palisade tissue cell. Um, here we go, palisade cells, and then we have spongy tissue cells, but this is where most of the photosynthesis occurs is this layer right here. And these green dots would represent the chloroplasts. 
At the bottom of the leaf, we have our stoma, one stoma shown here. And then we have what we call guard cells, uh, which don't actually like guard the, the stoma, but what they do is they regulate or change the size of the opening to allow more things to enter or exit or to stop it if there's not enough water around. We'll talk about that in just a second. So once sugar gets made in these cells here, sugar ends up entering the phloem. Okay, and that, that happens by the cells expending some energy to move sugar to where, you know, it's lower or higher, yeah, lower in concentration to higher in concentration. We don't talk about that process much. But once we have the sugar inside the phloem, water flows into the phloem again by osmosis from where there's more water outside to where there's less inside the phloem. So phloem is packed with sugar, so there's not a lot of water in there. That again actually creates pressure. So I end up getting pressure from water coming into the phloem, and then as a result, that phloem, the pressure causes it to uh, be able to spread all throughout the plant. So kind of interesting how osmosis is responsible for a lot of what happens in the plant in terms of fluids moving around. Let's talk some more about the guard cell. The guard cells cause the stomata to open or close, or maybe we should say singular there, stoma to open or close. If the leaf is full of water, the guard cells will swell, causing the stoma to be open. If there's not enough water around, the guard cells will shrink and the stoma will be closed. So here we have an open uh, stoma. And that's happening because as there's lots and lots of water around, so the plant has access to, to a lot of water, well then water is going to flow into the guard cells by osmosis. So the guard cells will get larger, and as it gets larger, the opening gets larger as well. This allows photosynthesis to take place. Okay, so it allows CO2 to come in, oxygen to leave, and water to leave by transpiration, bringing up more water from the roots. If there's not enough water in the leaf, so in other words, the plant is kind of a shortage of water, well, then the stoma is going to close. And that happens because as there's less water in the leaf, as a result, the guard cell ends up shrinking as water flows from where there's more of it in the guard cell to where there's less of it in the rest of the leaf. And then as a result, that stoma closes. Okay, so then photosynthesis can't occur because there's no way to get the CO2 in and the oxygen out and also for the water to be pulled up from the roots. So this is kind of a neat mechanism that plants use in order to make sure that they don't lose too much water, that they only um, kind of thrive or perform photosynthesis when there's sufficient water. And if there isn't enough water, then it's, they just kind of stop for a while or slow down a large amount of the photosynthesis that takes place by closing their stomata. All right. Um, I don't think we're going to do this because we kind of went through that other diagram, but just again, really quickly what's happening. Water gets pulled into the roots by osmosis. Water, as always in osmosis, is going from where there's more water in the soil to where there's less in the root. As more and more water comes into the root, pressure builds up. That is the pushing force pushing water up the xylem of the plant. Water in the leaf evaporates from the leaf in a process called transpiration. And that's when water is leaving through the stomata because of evaporation from the sunlight. As that occurs, that's the pulling force that brings more and more water up into the leaves. This is regulated by osmosis occurring in guard cells. If there's lots of water available to the plant, the guard cells are going to be bigger because water will flow into them, opening the stomata. If there isn't as much water, the stomata will be closed because you know, shortage of water. So the guard cells are going to shrink. Uh, and that's really it. It's kind of a really uh, cool mechanism. We'll probably watch a video about this, but yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. All right, well, that's it for today. Hopefully you learned about what osmosis is and understand the role that it has in plants. Have a good rest of your day.